Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at the very last uh, talk at our Congress. Um, it is very uh, deep pleasure for me to welcome our last speaker, Franciszek or Frank Vrabel. He is a CEO and uh, co-founder of Semantic Vision, what is Czech company which collects and analyzes 90% of world's uh, news content and he deeply understands the media ecosystem and he will tell you much more about the, what we should be aware in uh, nowadays world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation. Uh, actually, this is the first time I present uh, to the audience uh, like yours. Um, and I really appreciate it because I believe that uh, we should join uh, forces. Today I would like uh, uh, to share my views uh, on uh, the new type of dictatorship. Uh, I call it dicta dictatorship uh, 2.0, uh, which is powered by artificial uh, intelligence. And uh, at the beginning, let me uh, show you a short video. Ho hopefully some of you know uh, it's uh, Charlie Chaplin's parody of dictators. It was, uh, the, the movie was uh, released uh, in 1940, and I think you perfectly understand what is the parody about. This, or the old dictators, they tried to rule the world through force, and it was basically uh, 3D, uh, 3D uh, dictatorship. Uh, firstly, let me introduce uh, my company uh, shortly. Um, um, we, uh, we, uh, we are based, or our system uh, is based uh, on not only that we collect uh, data in large scale, uh, let's say three, two times, uh, ten times more than Google News. Uh, every, uh, so the number of sources that we work with is over 650,000. Our sources are news websites, uh, online news portals, blogs, um, uh, different uh, websites belonging to government uh, or academia um, or, or companies and, and so on. And the system um, uses uh, semantic analysis as, uh, as the key method to understand what uh, the, the articles or the documents uh, uh, are about. Um, since what we do for a living is not um, detecting uh, disinformation, uh, but uh, is detecting unknown events that, uh, uh, that have the potential uh, to jeopardize su supply chain uh, in, some, in some sort of, in some shape. Um, and we keep eye on millions of companies that uh, are suppliers of, uh, of, the big, uh, of the big buyers, uh, mainly the multinational, uh, large multi multinational uh, companies. And working with uh, such an amount of uh, data, um, <clears throat> information, sources, we are one of the very few organizations in the world that, uh, uh, that has an overview of the entire uh, media uh, landscape and our capabilities in um, detection of uh, disinformation is basically a side product of what we do uh, for a living. By the way, because most of you are IT experts, the biggest challenge that we face is to distinguish the critical noise from uh, the critical signals from irrelevant noise, um, and uh, to, and detecting unknown events is, uh, of course, uh, in orders of magnitude more complex than just provide search capability. Uh, since uh, we are in Prague. Um, uh, all of you uh, know that uh, Czechoslovakia was occupied uh, by, uh, by, uh, by Soviet Union or Russia, if you like, uh, back in 1968. <clears throat> uh, 
um, and we um, and during the years 20, the whole period after this uh, uh, 1968 invasion until the fall of communism in the Czechoslovakia we were fed uh, by propaganda that this was not an occupation or invasion but that was a brotherly help so we perfectly understand what hostile propaganda is and we are perfectly aware of the methods uh, Russia uh, and um, uh, the Russian state Kremlin uh, is using. Uh, we stepped into this arena which uh, you can imagine that is not comfortable um, like three and a half years ago and we I had in mind uh, the quote of uh, Edmund Burke uh, the Irish statesman um, and uh, philosopher uh, of the 18th century saying the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is uh, for good men do nothing due to the fact that uh, basically our system knows about about everything in the world uh, I mean about things that uh, are being uh, published in news or the events that are being or topics that are being uh, um, commented uh, or published in news uh, this slide came across um, um, three, and three and a half years ago and what it basically shows is um, um, the psychological or, uh, preparation of uh, annexation of Crimea and it shows how the Russian propaganda machine uh, influenced or tried to influence um, uh, the Russian public opinion uh, so uh, so Russian people are um, are okay are comfortable with uh, with with Russia starting the war as as you know most of you uh, war is a very unpopular thing uh, in Russia uh, and they have to, they had to prepare grounds so what you see on the chart and visualizations uh, are in most of the cases the only way how to understand big data and this chart was created uh, from hundreds of millions of articles uh, the chart starts in June 2011 and ends up uh, in February 2014 when uh, the occupation um, in of Crimea uh, uh, the operation started and what uh, the, the red columns show the negative sentiment on Ukraine not just a, as a keyword but uh, as a semantic uh, object or abstract object semantic category which uh, comprises of um, um, of uh, all the uh, cities and, and regions and uh, uh, and industries uh, and the government and the president and so on uh, while the blue column show the negative sentiment in English global media uh, there are two uh, there are two things that struck uh, to my eyes first of all uh, in our system and I think uh, this is in general there is like five to six times more of uh, English content than Russian content and you see uh, there is on that chart there is much less uh, uh, global content so this is the first um, uh, difference um, according to the standard situation and uh, secondly and this is more important that uh, there is a clear negative trend starting uh, two years before the annexation happened and our our interpretation is clear that uh, the Russian government uh, was or started preparation for the annexation well before uh, at least in the information space uh, two years uh, before it happened uh, we wanted to bring uh, I wanted to bring uh, uh, ev an evidence that something like uh, large-scale manipulation of, uh, of public opinion exists and um, mm, unfortunately we got uh, uh, the chance uh, to prove it on on two very tragic uh, events um, the first uh, is uh, shooting down the MH17 over the eastern Ukraine by Russian system 
And the second, uh, <clears throat> at the second event, uh, similarly tragic one, um, uh, downing, uh, downing the, downing of uh, the Russian civilian airplane full of people belonging to Metrojet airline uh, over Sinai, uh, Egypt. So again, uh, the, the red color reflects uh, the number, in this case it reflects the number of articles on that given event in Russian media and uh, in both, uh, on both charts. Uh, and the blue line, uh, or the blue color represents the number of um, uh, English <clears throat> on articles on those events in English uh, language. So you see a big, two big differences um, while uh, while uh, the, the second event, the Metrojet event, had a similar proportion uh, or appropriate proportion, uh, although it was slightly more than one to five or one to six, but of course all it, it, the event was related uh, to Russians, uh, to Russian people, uh, because all of the victims or casualties were Russians. <clears throat> Um, then uh, we see that there's a basically the same pattern um, how the media uh, were providing uh, the news coverage. Um, the pattern or the, the individual spikes uh, are, uh, were triggered by, uh, by new information, emerging new information, for example, like that they found out that uh, an employee of the airport security brought uh, an explosive, uh, explosives uh, to the luggage of the airplane. <clears throat> when, when you compare it uh, to the upper chart, you see that there's, basi that there's completely proportional, and secondly, there's no pattern. Um, and <clears throat> clearly, the Russian government wanted to downplay um, uh, the event um, internally, domestically, as much uh, as uh, possible, and. This chart shows the, the, the I would say, um, almost unim unimaginable um, grip uh, the Russian or the control of Russian government uh, over the Russian media. And, and mainly um, this, please take into account that this chart has not been made out of um, like tens of uh, uh, different sources from mainstream media, but uh, the chart, both charts, as far as Russian sources, were um, uh, were drawn uh, or were created uh, based on analysis of 24,000 uh, sources. Um, unfortunately, uh, all our work or or our analysis show uh, that public opinion is. Uh, just a mirror image of a critical mass of online media. In other words, there's a very high correlation of uh, the public opinion and, uh, and the critical mass. And this is known, uh, and this is known o not only to us, but is, it is uh, well known uh, to, the, to our adversaries uh, who are leveraging or using or abusing uh, this uh, knowledge. Um, the, the chart that you see uh, beneath um, the, um, the statement shows uh, that there was no surprise uh, that Donald Trump won uh, the elections and became the uh, U.S. president. The blue, uh, the blue, uh, the blue columns show uh, the number of mentions. Uh, on online news uh, uh, of Hillary Clinton, why, why the red, red columns show, uh, show uh, the mentions of um, the, the sheer volume uh, of mentions of uh, Donald Trump. So Donald Trump used to work as a steamroller and basically by, by the sheer volume uh, he was able to win, um, uh, to win um, the election. And I think this principle, please, uh, uh, Please remember, and we'll come to it uh, later on. So, um, if you have the critical mass, um, if, if you have um, uh, a cr uh, if you have a critical mass of uh, the online news content, um, 
uh, over time, um, uh, it influences or it uh, creates uh, the public opinion. And basically, these two elements uh, are two sides of the same, of the hyper-object that is here. And the one that is able to control this hyper-object basically controls, um, controls uh, the minds uh, of people. Uh, since um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit uh, also about Russian propaganda and then we'll switch uh, to, uh, to, uh, to other topic, the main one, um, about uh, uh, the sad role uh, of online social networks, mainly Facebook. I would like to share with you uh, the key narratives uh, Russian propaganda is using. The key one is uh, relativization of the truth. Um, basically, what uh, what they are what they are aiming to is us not to believe to to anything, and once we believe, uh, once we stop believing uh, in the truth, uh, uh, and in our institutions, uh, they believe that um, um, the structure, the structure of our democracy, of structure of our democratic societies, will collapse and they will be able to impose, impose their rule of law, uh, which is might and organized crime. So, uh, the relativization of the truth is, is in the center, uh, and the other key narratives uh, are the anti-democracy narrative, the anti-NATO nar narrative, the anti-EU, which is very strong, mainly in this, uh, mainly in this country, uh, the anti-US, narrative, uh, anti-minorities, um, and of course, uh, all kinds of uh, a set of uh, pro-Kremlin narratives, uh, one of which you can, um, one of which is, for example, that manipulative portrayal of uh, Russian, uh, of non-aggression of Russia, that Russia has never started any war, like there was no Molotov-Ribbentrop pact, when Russia invaded Poland at the beginning of Sec Second World War, just a few days uh, after the Germans did that from the West. Um, um, and, uh, and that Russia did not invade uh, Georgia or the eastern part of Ukraine. So when I'm talking about disinformation, here is the, here is the definition, uh, which I believe uh, is correct. Um, uh, disinformation is basically um, uh, just um, a translation, uh, borrowed translation from uh, uh, from Russian. Um, Desinformatia was a, a department of KGB uh, which was focused on so-called black uh, propaganda. And the prevailing model of uh, disinformation is that it starts with uh, uh, with uh, just a limited number of uh, sources which are on the bigger, larger, or, or lesser control of, uh, uh, of the Russian uh, government. Um, and, and the source publish, this particular source uh, publish um, uh, disinformation, which is, then, uh, which is then republished by affiliated sources. Uh, to give you an example from our country, from Czech Republic, from the Czech Republic, um, uh, at the beginning there are like less, or twen around 20, of, uh, of toxic sources, um, out of which uh, five of them are creating most of the noise, or most of the toxic content. So it's, it's a very, it's it's a very targeted or very focused uh, uh, effort or beginning of the disinformation spread. Um, and um, and just you know, uh, I think you'll you'll be intrigued by the information that in case of the Czech Republic, those 20 sources produce around 70%, 70% of all the disinformation which is published uh, in, uh, in the Czech Republic. And our system uh, keeps, uh, uh, keeps eye or analyze uh, information articles coming from over 4,000 sources. So 20 produce 70% of all the toxic content. So, 
Um, but <clears throat> the pre but uh, the model is or the prevailing uh, practice is that uh, the the toxic messages or the disinformation is then uh, disseminated and amplified by online social networks and by far the worst role the darkest role plays uh, facebook and this is the reason why i will focus in my in my coming slides uh, next slides on on facebook um, uh, you, uh, you in the audience um, uh, are very much uncomfortable with the level of uh, state-controlled or state-owned uh, surveillance in which uh, the facial recognition technology plays uh, a key role or significant role and I share, and I share uh, your um, uh, your views uh, on that. The th the, I would say the bad thing is that uh, those, uh, the companies uh, that, are, that are bringing uh, this uh, facial recognition technology to newer heights um, are mostly Chinese companies and they are getting uh, funding uh, uh, like the Face, two, face Plus One uh, getting like three quarters of billion of dollars, but there are others uh, getting billions of dollars um, also f from uh, the West. And China is clearly the pioneering, uh, I would say, the industry of state-controlled uh, uh, society. Uh, and they are using, um, uh, they are using uh, the methods or, or uh, they are leveraging artificial intelligence uh, in those efforts uh, came uh, big time. If we, uh, if we uh, think uh, or if we uh, take a look uh, what how many data points uh, uh, facial recognition uh, takes into account and basically on these uh, data points uh, uh, the state is able uh, to, uh, to provide the surveillance uh, of, of, uh, of their citizens uh, it's not that it's not that many, <clears throat> and if you compare it with uh, what Facebook is collecting, uh, not only on its users but everybody uh, who who somehow get into contact with a Facebook user or uh, or the one uh, that is not a Facebook user but has a, a f uh, but has a friend or is contact in Facebook users. So this is the this is the overview of. Uh, of uh, um, Facebook algorithmic factory. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, the visualization is uh, not coming from semantic visions, but uh, it, is, um, it is work, um, or uh, this is the result of analysis of Share uh, Foundation. And there will, be, there will be a couple of animations now. So at the beginning, we will focus uh, on this uh, left uh, upper part. Um, and we'll take a look at what uh, Facebook is uh, collecting uh, in this part. So uh, it starts by, um, among other things, with, uh, with uh, downloading all the contacts uh, the particular user uh, has. We may take a look uh, to a different uh, uh, part of uh, Facebook algorithmic uh, factory. Um, which is, um, uh, again, uh, the data collection uh, on the data collection side. And, um, uh, we'll f and you see um, what kind of uh, data um, or information uh, Google uh, collects uh, on, on each of its users uh, in a standard way, um, like your religious views, uh, gender, uh, your political views, uh, and so on. Let's take a look uh, to a slightly different uh, part of, uh, of, uh, of the diagram. Um, it goes after uh, your relationships, um, whether you are married or you're in, you're in love with somebody or you're open to, uh, to relationship, uh, which is by far uh, more intimate than, than your face, of course. If we go further and take a look uh, on this part of the algorithmic factory, powered by artificial intelligence, of course, 
um, we see the social graph, um, the Facebook uh, and the, uh, the algorithm uh, creates uh, around uh, each uh, user. And it's basically, it, it maps all the social interaction the particular user uh, conducts. And as I said before, and as most of you know, uh, you can be disconnected from, uh, from Facebook, but once you are online and one of your or some of your friends are Facebook users, uh, or even if they don't use Facebook, but their friends uh, are on Facebook, then they basically know almost everything uh, about you. So, compared to this, uh, the NSA surveillance capability is a just child's play. What Mark Zuckerberg, because he is the, he is responsible for the juggernaut, for the monster uh, that uh, he created, is not connecting people, of course, but it is uh, to steal uh, your identity and sell it for manipulations, aim of which uh, is um, aiming its users uh, to, uh, to do, uh, to want, uh, to uh, believe uh, and do uh, what Facebook and its customers want to. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a dark bonus of uh, Zuckerberg. Um, and I already told about the child's play of, of, um, of NSA, which is the surveillance squad as a service. And this is basically what, uh, what uh, brings money uh, to Facebook. And if you return to that, uh, to that uh, algorithmic factory uh, diagram and take a look uh, on, the, on the right side, which is the targeting, ad targeting, um, we would see, for example, uh, the kind of political views uh, the, uh, the Facebook is collecting on, um, on um, people that have somehow relationship, some relationship with, uh, with US uh, politics. As all of us know, there's not just Facebook, or Facebook Incorporated um, has uh, four, or, uh, has four um, services. Um, Facebook is just one of it, uh, and uh, the important thing is that, that Facebook as a service, um, uh, Instagram, um, Messenger, and WhatsApp are, are all connected and interconnected, um, and this provides the surveillance um, on a completely new, uh, new level, and all the, all the lies of uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, that once uh, <clears throat> he will encrypt the communication on, on WhatsApp, for example, this is just a bullshit, um, um, and it's uh, just a smoke screen of uh, what uh, uh, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg is aiming to. Um, what is behind? Uh, behind is the artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithm, um, micro-targeting, which is um, providing uh, uh, as exact uh, or precise uh, as, as possible. Um, and uh, what, what they need to do, what Facebook needs to do, is to create as small targets as possible, uh, as, small of, as small groups of people uh, sharing the same views or, or, or hobbies uh, and so on, um, as homogeneous groups as possible, at the same time being as small as possible. And by, by being able to sell uh, sell these profiles um, or identities of, uh, of, of the people involved or being part of uh, those um, information bubbles. They are, uh, Facebook is dividing the society, fragmentizing the society, atomizing the, uh, the society, um, and um, uh, this way Facebook is able to increase uh, its revenue in orders of magnitude. So the more precise ad, the higher, much higher in orders of magnitude to Facebook. But this is not enough. 
what Facebook needs more uh, uh, further is to keep it's called it is so-called user engagement to keep its user as long as possible uh, in front of uh, their app um, and uh, they are using all kinds of tricks neuroscience tricks providing uh, doses of dopamine to its users uh, through likes um, and the the artificial intelligence behind basic on the big data of uh, over two billion people in a, in, a, in a rather long period of time, uh, it realized uh, uh, the, the weaknesses uh, of us as people and um, uh, the increasing um, user engagement is using uh, methods or the, uh, or the knowledge that the machine learning algorithms uh, gained, which is that we are, we are selfish, uh, we love to hear what we think, uh, we love to be adored, um, um, and this is the first part. And the second part is that the more radical uh, content um, Facebook provides us, for example, in the, in the form of uh, news feeds, um, the more attention it grabs. Um, and by atomization of the society and radicalization, uh, the, the, the collateral damage is that finally there's a destruction of uh, society. Well, the negative aspects of online social networks uh, be, uh, uh, have come to mainstream um, just after US presidential elections uh, in 2016. But since you are, I would say, uh, um, since you are people who, uh, who have a deeper knowledge, I believe that uh, most of you recognize that uh, already uh, much, uh, much earlier. So the US presidential elections didn't bring uh, any casualties, <clears throat> but uh, the, a, uh, the uh, Facebook brought thousands of casualties in, uh, in the process of radicalization of the Middle East population all the wars in Syria and ISIS. Uh, Facebook was a major tool for recruiting uh, uh, ISIS uh, warriors. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg has uh, hands, hands uh, dirty with blood of thousands of people. And, but not only that, um, he's responsible for, uh, for millions of uh, people uh, being uh, displaced uh, within the Middle East. Um, let me now show you a couple of uh, abstract slides, conceptual slides. Uh, in the past, media aimed to be neutral and to provide uh, objective uh, reporting. You may disagree, but this was the prevailing model. And all the media laws are, are written in that sense, to distinguish between objective reporting and, uh, and opinion journalism, or providing opinions. So, please consider it as a model. So at the beginning there were neutral media and, and uh, uh, Facebook uh, in, in the center or, or in the middle uh, was also neutral. But during the course of time, by, uh, by application of, um, of um, the algorithms uh, uh, I explained uh, before, um, the uh, the particular users uh, of Facebook get polarized, get radicalized, and uh, uh, as a result, uh, the, um, uh, there, was, there, there appeared or emerged uh, a demand uh, for news sources that reflect the uh, increasingly radicalized uh, users. And uh, and, in, and at the same time, um, the demand of uh, or demand for neutral uh, or objective uh, media uh, shrinked. But this is not enough because there's a negative um, um, feedback uh, loop. Um, the, the users of Facebook they they are interested in more and more radical views. So. The, the, the media became more and more radical 
Um, and at the same time, uh, the negative uh, feedback loop uh, also impacts or influences uh, the increasingly uh, uh, the increasing shrinking of the neutral uh, media uh, space. So talking about uh, disinformation, we don't have disinformation on this slide yet or the, on this uh, in this model yet. Even if Russians or Chinese or the Islamic State <coughs> or other forces in the Middle East uh, would not would not uh, be distributing or disseminating uh, disinformation. Uh, the public uh, is already radicalized, and they, um, uh, they, uh, in increasing way, they vote uh, for the extreme uh, parties, or they, uh, or they don't participate in the democratic process. So, uh, Facebook, uh, the story of Facebook is a continuous lie. Um, in the f if we start from the left, uh, you see congressional hearings uh, of Mark Zuckerberg, I think it was spring uh, last year, when, among others, <clears throat> uh, he denied, uh, he denied uh, the Facebook uh, uh, capability of listening or, or controlling microphone of um, its users uh, in, on their in their smartphones and listening to their private conversations at home or kitchen or in bedroom. Uh, it turned out, uh, it turned out just recently that that was true. Um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg called that allegation as a conspiracy theory, but again, it turned out to be true um, based on the information that was published uh, in June. Um, another, another case, uh, that you are familiar with uh, the shooting uh, in New Zealand in Christchurch um, when uh, the, New Zealand, uh, the government of New Zealand uh, urged or was requesting Facebook to, to, to stop disseminating uh, um, the video coverage of the shooting um, and Facebook was pretending, was lying that it is doing and then uh, the privacy commissioner, the minister for private, uh, protecting uh, private data, uh, called uh, Facebook um, um, pathological uh, liars. And as most of you, if not all of you, uh, are fond of um, of um, cyber uh, of uh, cyber currencies, based on uh, built on on uh, blockchain. All of you know about Libra. Uh, Facebook is pretending that it is on a blockchain, but actually uh, th their Facebook blockchain does not uh, contain blocks, neither uh, chains. So, so liar, liar, um, um, pens on fire. Um, but this is not enough. Uh, what scares me to death is uh, Facebook uh, attempts uh, or initiative uh, and supporting research and buying, acquiring companies that are building uh, uh, brain to computer um, interface. Um, at the time being, uh, how Mark Zuckerberg is ex explaining that is that uh, they want to help people. <clears throat> we heard that in the past. And I believe that uh, his only goal is to control, um, to once he's able, or Facebook is able to read the minds, then it is just one step from being able to control, to implant uh, ideas uh, to our minds. This is a famous quote of Mark Zuckerberg, which was published uh, repeatedly last time in um, in the book uh, of Ben Mesrich, which was called Bitcoin Billionaires, uh, about uh, the Winklevoss uh, twins. So you can be unethical and still be legal. That's the way uh, I live my life. Um, the human society, uh, since the dawn of um, its existence of humankind, it was, it was built on cohesion on collaboration, empathy, responsibility, and ethics. While Facebook, which was founded in 2004, is built on disintegration, which, which um, aim or which um, 
results in uh, atomization of the society, in controversy. They are using the principle of uh, controversy, which results in uh, radicalization of the society. It uses the principle of promoting selfishness uh, through addiction of those dopamine doses. Uh, it is based on principle of irresponsibility. Uh, it's completely an anonymous uh, environment, uh, which welcome um, um, the worst uh, from us. And uh, uh, the algorithms that power uh, Facebook uh, monster uh, doesn't, don't have um, any, uh, uh, any dimension, any social or ethical dimension. You can, you can view that or understand that, comprehend that also as a process. So through the cohesion, collaboration, empathy, responsibility and ethics, we became humans. So it's a process of humanization. Why on the other side, on the opposite side, Facebook being built on disintegration, controversy, promoting selfishness, irresponsibility and no ethics, is, provides a nasty dehumanization of mankind. So uh, I would like to, and before going to the last slide, um, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, you may know that, uh, that um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is not responsible to anybody but himself. It's a big exception of uh, public companies. He holds 60% of voting rights. He cannot be. He cannot be. Um, he cannot be put down of his throne of uh, president and CEO. And I would like to ask you uh, to help uh, to help him and to help stop uh, him. Thank you, Frank, for for very interesting and definitely disrupting presentation. And I would like to give you the space for the questions. Uh, thanks for the talk, first of all. Sorry, I took several notes. I have some questions. Um, the first question regarding the first part of the presentation do you, regarding misinformation, do you mostly focus on Russia, like, or do you also provide other reports about other countries, other topics, etc.? Because you seem to single out that misinformation was only a feature of uh, China and Russia, for instance. But I come from a democratic country in Europe where, at some point, the Muammar Gaddafi was a rabbit dog. He then became a very nice individual where people should trade with him, and then he all, all of a sudden he became a rabbit dog again. Um, so it's that Orwellian thing that we're always been in war with East Asia, even like yesterday we weren't. Um, also, uh, on may, 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 sorry, sir, may I ask, may I respond now? Because. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and you may raise uh, the second part of your question later on. I share your frustration, and Muammar Gaddafi case uh, is, uh, I would say, the bad example uh, of uh, how Western media and Western governments uh, presented him. Uh, that's, uh, that is uh, for sure. But I would like to distinguish between, uh, between misinterpretation, uh, sorry, between misinformation and disinformation. And the disinformation is large-scale state um, controlled or managed uh, oper information operations. And don't uh, you the goal of which is to change the public opinion. And don't you think that happens in the US, for instance? Um, you mean um, uh, by the US government? Yeah, or some agencies that depend on the US government. Um, I, do, I don't share that uh, level of uh, frustration. Uh, of course, uh, the West is not uh, without is not uh, without any guilt, um, but it is uncomparable what uh, the totalitarian, totalitarian systems uh, are doing, like uh, Russia or China or Iran. Okay. Um, 
going back and also continuing on this one, don't you think that like forcing Facebook or YouTube or Google, for instance, and you single out mostly on Facebook, but also I think that there are several other concerning players exactly. in this space. Uh, don't you think that forcing those like government regulating those those companies to police thought will also have an impact given that today most of the people interact and share ideas in the, on those spaces so if the governments give facebook the power to deem what's misinformation what's like reasonable opinions what's not reasonable opinions that actually like putting people on even smaller and smaller boxes at some point well th thank you for that question <clears throat> Uh, me personally, I believe that uh, Facebook has to be regulated. I know that regulations are not the, the, uh, the measures uh, you love. <laughs> but the world would be much, uh, much uh, worse place if there would be no regulation on banks, for example. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't believe that the regulation should be on the content level, uh, like providing censorship and providing some sort of a ministry of, of the truth. Um, but it has to be on the level of algorithms. Uh, for example, I think the, the easiest way would be uh, to, uh, to, to set the threshold for, uh, for the granularity of, uh, of uh, the groups or micro, uh, my, for my, micro targeting. That would be pretty easy. So uh, the system would not work with, and this is just an example, with one million uh, different groups. Um, um, atomizing the society, but just with 1,000. Again, this is an example uh, only. So this way, uh, we, would, uh, we, would, uh, we would drastically mitigate um, the problems that come out of uh, fragmentizing the society. And secondly, uh, I believe that um, uh, we should, uh, or, or the, government sh the government should regulate uh, or put light on um, uh, on on that uh, dopamine addiction um, uh, or drug addiction, which uh, Facebook uh, is uh, uh, has imposed on on majority of population. So no content, no censorship. Just look at the algorithms. Okay, but by looking at the algorithms, you could eventually create a system that it would be not that different. Like, obviously, not the political implications, but it could be not that different from the social credit in China, where let's say I have friends with very unpopular opinions, and like, and they spread what maybe you would consider misinformation, or maybe I would consider misinformation, because they have their very own unique opinions. But by virtue of me, and I, I don't use any Facebook uh, services, but by virtue of me being connected with those persons, maybe the algorithm will eventually censor also my interactions with other people because I'm again, connected to that person. Uh, again, I, I will repeat that again. Uh, I believe that the regulation should not, uh, uh, should not include uh, any kind of censorship, just uh, regulation of algorithms of creating uh, uh, the, uh, the information bubbles and uh, the neuroscience and abuse of neuroscience. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to um, connect to this, to, to the previous question and to your reaction. Um, I would argue that um, limiting algorithms wouldn't really help because I think the main problem of Facebook is the misalignment of the business model because um, because of the freemium business model, because uh, Facebook earns money based on the advertisements. Uh, if we had maybe a social network where users, users have to pay, then the, the network would, would have incentive to do the best service for them and not not for the customers i completely agree with you this is uh, this is an excellent point but uh, the, f the 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 situation the reality is that we have facebook and and uh, and the services uh, that uh, uh, that is it it consists of um and there's already addiction uh, everybody's on facebook uh, and 
we and, and the public thinks that uh, uh, that uh, the service is for free and is not able to recognize to comprehend uh, that uh, Facebook is selling uh, the identities of its of its users. In the in the perfect world, I completely agree with you. We have social network. Uh, which is based on subscription, but I don't think that uh, we can force uh, enforce that. Maybe this could be a way, but I, I doubt it, because this is not only Facebook, uh, which is causing the problem uh, of micro targeting, uh, but it's also Google, I mean, a uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, pretty close uh, to the negative impact on society. Yeah, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, it was nice to have some data to back our conspiracy theories. <laughs> um, you invited us at the end of your talk to um, stop him. Um, how do you suggest we do that? And do you even think it's really possible? Um, yes, um, I hope so, um, because I'm Me optimistic too. by nature. I think the first thing is uh, to provide the awareness of, uh, of, of that problem, of the problem that uh, Facebook, or what is Facebook doing uh, to the society. And um, each of us uh, has uh, certain knowledge and, uh, and uh, methods uh, to help uh, in that fight. Yes, but I feel like this is something that works with people like us that tend to attend these events, etc. But what about normal people who just don't give a shit about this? This is exactly what... Who is the majority and yeah. basically the people who are the targets and those who fuel all these problems, basically. Uh, I can imagine that there is more whistleblowers from Facebook organizations, uh, for, from Facebook organization, for example. Um, uh, I can imagine that since you're, most of you are, are geeks, uh, that you have friends, somehow you can get um, uh, to get connection to those people who are creating, uh, uh, who have created that, that monster. Um, and uh, maybe you can provide information that will, that would help, um, help uh, uh, mankind to fight uh, this uh, threat. Okay, so they would do what? Stop using it or? Uh, I think most the, people the... probably won't. Mm -hmm. So of course uh, the, uh, the great way is uh, to vote by by your legs, like uh, leaving uh, Facebook uh, forever. Um, but I think this is not realistic because uh, Facebook has monopoly. Uh, and if you're not on Facebook, then you have no friends, at least certain parts. Or ma major, um, majority of people think uh, uh, in uh, that way. So um, I am I am a, I'm a supporter or I believe that Facebook has to be regulated on, a, uh, on, a, on, a le on, a, on the level of the European Union and the UN US government. But I know that uh, the state regulation is something that you're not fond of. So please think over of methods uh, how we can achieve that. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Uh, I would like to quit Facebook, but there is a problem. The program of Parallelny Polis is published on Facebook. So I have one wish. Could you please, in Parallelny Polis, publish your program outside of Facebook as well, as it was possible for the Hackers' Congress? And then I have one question. Can I, can I buy from Facebook my personal information, everything that they collect about me? Can I buy it? Good one. Um, I think you, you could buy it once uh, you pretend that you are a marketing or digital uh, marketing agency. Uh, if you pretend that you're in that, even if you're not a marketing agency, uh, they will sell you all the data uh, about uh, to the two billion people they have, including uh, your current GPS location. It is available on the market. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a, a, a quick question regarding uh, the motivation. So you said Facebook is doing this uh, for greed because he's monetizing uh, information about our privacy. But uh, 
imagine that just like in email, except for Gmail, you can use Proton Mail, which hopefully uh, is uh, maintaining our privacy and not collecting da data on us. So if someone, I mean, let's uh, let's be hypothetical for now. If someone came up with a with Facebook that doesn't collect any information on us and uh, just provides the same service, but uh, but uh, doesn't sell it to anyone. The, the phenomena that you are worried about, they would still be present, right? Uh, the radicalization and the atomization. In, so, sorry to interrupt you. In case uh, the service is based on subscription, or at least is managed by... I don't know. I mean, no, it's, no, it just seems you. to me that this is orthogonal to... That it's somehow a social phenomenon what's happening on Facebook, that people tend to like opinions that they agree with and it radicalizes them or not. I mean, that's, that's my question. If there was just um, someone running a copy of Facebook out of charity and not trying to earn money on that at all, would the same social behavior happen, do you think? In, or, in or case uh, the, the clone, I would say. Yeah, the, the and, clone, and everyone would switch to the clone, no uh, one uses Facebook the, anymore. The clone uses the same algorithms, then it would be just a new Facebook. But, but the alternative exists, like a subscription-based uh, social networks. Um, but uh, it, the, the, the difficulty is, or the problem is, that it is not uh, being uh, used by too many people. And, uh, and as you know, the, the big digital services, they tend to monopolize the entire environment. So people tend to, be, uh, to use the service which is used uh, by, by, by the others. Um, so in the perfect world, uh, we have a, we have a, because the service it costs something, so the users or the subscribers of the service pay for, uh, pay for uh, the service. Therefore, the operator, um, um, the operator, gets uh, covered costs and, and, and reasonable profit. Um, and uh, there will be no intention of the operator of of the company operating uh, this service uh, to radicalize um, and to fragmentize um, uh, the society. Okay, thank you. This is my opinion. Okay, we have time for a last question. Uh, maybe not a question, maybe more a reaction, because this is also for me was a question. If the if you would clone it, it will happen the same thing. But in this case, I think we should also think more about like digital communities and what it really is. You know that Facebook is creating something like, but. It's not a digital community in the end, but for example, when you look at a project as Kiberia SK, the point SK, you know, they have a problem, so they need to, to get people out. There are people of different opinions, but you know, the feeling that you go there and you share your opinion, okay, right now we know that it was also leaked about like the, this new political party, doesn't matter, but the situation that you're there and nobody is monetizing what you are saying. It's a, that's the feeling of the digital community and the clone of the Facebook would be like, I think, still somebody, if not the Facebook, if not the application, someone else would monetize it, actually. So this is, a, this is for me like a big question and I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Rabo, for your presentation and for sharing this idea with us. So thank you for your attention. Thank guys. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rabel, as well. And I would love to, you and all of you invite to the closing ceremony in Studio One. And thank you for the Congress. <laughs>